One of the things that is challenging, is obviously, to the AI world, I think, is this, that I believe the population paradigm taken genuinely uh, and consisting of a population of machines, if you like, probably not of a particular fabric, because present-day machines simply can't do, they're not fabric capable of doing certain kinds of process. A uh, useful present-day approximation, which is a minimum for artificial intelligence, I believe, would be a population of these implementing um, something which is, by name or not, entailment measures capable of evolving. Um, if one can introduce into such machine um, a way of pruning from more than one point of view, and in a sense, doing that automatically, which is very similar to what I'm doing for oversaturated, this actually. <coughs> actually, one of the things I have to do about oversaturated is according to the present calculus. Uh, then, of course, I'd have an intelligent system, and there won't be anything artificial about it. It would be a very specialized intelligence, perhaps, and it might be a useful one or not, depending rather upon how it's done. And certainly isn't just one kind. The world is full of intelligences with their languages. And languages look for fresh ones. In which to live. Just as such systems look for languages which to speak. And they're indeed, they're indeed jewels. But, um, hmm? it, it seems to me that while we're sort of winding down this set of sessions, that one interesting outcome of this last session is a, a strong focus, although it's not been fully explicated, I think it's something we could pursue, on the significance of further talk about process in the role of generator. Yeah. Sure. That uh, we have, my feeling is that in, in the whole set of conversations we've had, uh, a good deal of clarity about coherence and uh, distinction. Mm -hmm. The process is, is uh, still an area in terms of its translation back to natural language, in terms of what's really going on in what we call a natural language. Yeah. The process is one of the is more a, understanding a process factor. is a very hard thing to bring over into a, a more generalized understanding of natural language uh, and how a natural language because it doesn't have the unfoldment procedures so readily formalized, obscures that, that role of process in it, and it's the thing that we tend not to see, and so that one of the things conversation theory seems to me most promising in is opening a way of seeing back into the natural languages that we tend to use. Oh yes, I mean, you could, uh, these operations are ones you can certainly perform as so crude. You can perform legitimately on, on an innatural language. In fact, I hypothesize, I believe, that uh, a natural language, any natural language, is generable from some from L sub P or some extension of L sub P. But once generated, I, I'm, I'm wondering about looking at it the other way. We have a whole lot of experience collectively with natural languages, yeah. uh, whatever their names. And a lot of them don't seem to necessarily serve the functions that you would predict because the process role is obscured in them. Or Sorry. Maybe I don't think the process role is obscured in natural language. That's why I call it natural language. In a certain sense, a language is living. Um, what I said at the outset, it is not just a metaphor. It is a metaphorical usage. Sorry, but it's not just a metaphorical usage to say so. It's a strict metaphor. Uh, Perhaps I use the word live in a perverse way. Perhaps we should reserve live for biological things which can be identified in some manner. Perhaps so. Perhaps you allow the word live for any sort of organization. I don't know, in which case it's quite a good word to use. It's as telling as any, uh, uh, and it's in that sense I mean it. A natural language in that sense is living. <laughs> and, of course, it's growing. It isn't, it isn't bounded. There, aren't, so there are certain rules you keep locally, but you also write poetry, which partly breaks those rules, or music, which partly breaks the rules of a few, but, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's still music, 
and the things evolve. Now, they, they have a process embodiment, and process embodiment is not the simple-minded thing, and this was adequately, I think, represented by, say, pointing out even the simplest social events have a topological dimension, manifestly of order very high. Uh, something in the order of, you know, 50 or 100, before you begin to describe them, most of them have many orders, many representations, different topological orders. Or degree, sorry. But it's, um, I mean, this is it manifestly not mappable onto, as many people try to do, onto one simplexes. It is very projectable onto one simplexes. I mean, as I was saying earlier, I mean, if you take a one simplex line, a typical self organization or agreement or something which can be indeed projected onto this bleeding line. And it will look as if it appears and disappears and weaves in and out and does all sorts of odd things. I mean, it will sort of. You don't know what it looks like. So you look at it here and you've got a projection. Which is called. Uh, you, what? Because that can happen before that. Because so it rather knocks your line, doesn't it? Uh, in fact, if you wanted to represent the whole of this thing, you probably need a very, very elaborate system. Indeed, something, nothing, nothing like this to represent this event at all. Mm. Nothing pathological about it. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's simply that you can't, in general, represent natural language in that sort of line. You can do kinds of projection of it in that way and get a very curious and distorted image. Because this may be, say, the beginning here, <laughs> in some sense in a, say, in an n simplex, or an n simple complex. That may be the beginning of the event, which is, you know, is going to be projected perhaps on the here, I don't know. <laughs> because I mean, it just look crazy, but I mean, uh, the, you get this curious sort of crazy image of, uh, of it, and um, you say, well, that, that, that event can't occur or something. Well, it's nonsense. It does occur. I mean, it's like, you know, this business thrives or you fall in love or whatever. It is not a... It is one of these kinds of statements is not something you will map onto a one simplex, I'm sorry. It is a perfectly good event. It's a very important event. But in order to represent it as a process, and damn it, it is a linguistic expression, both of these are common linguistic expressions. We say them in a one simplex, that's fine. Uh, the words and so forth are designed for mouths and ears and so forth, this kind of thing. Uh, they can be repeated. And we say we're saying the same thing, which is not true, actually. But uh, the certain Again, identity in Kurt Lewin's sense does exist, and uh, hence there is a sense in which you can say the same person, the same P individual, or say the same utterance. Um, but there's also a very good sense in which, if you want to process why you describe any of these, you can't so do in the line we like to think of, or the or the false simplex, or the relativity theory, whatever we like to think of, as representing process. And process is a more complex thing, and manifestly becomes a bit degraded and daft when you try to project it onto this very simple, certainly inadequate conversation theory type of event. The case in point is as an agreement, or a P-individual. There are events, sure, but... Well, the question is, in, in what process manifest? The only, it can only be projected onto readily known topologies, and that project, projection is very distorting. It may, in many cases, be so curious that it certainly would be inappropriate, for example, to use statistical tools. Why well, I doubted the use of statistics in mm his -hmm. earlier chat, I didn't really it was used for general purposes, but I realized fairly early on that the the mathematical basis was improper for this this field. Uh, and in fact, there are other sorts of ways of talking about relation and so forth, that uh, cause and so forth. 
than that one. But these have to, these have a phrase that are generated to be taught properly about natural language. And I think the majority of, of, of chat about the subject, and I'm not talking certainly not talking at all, I gave certain exceptions amongst them. Charles James Bailey and uh, Barrett and people like this, colleagues of mine, many people in the States too, the States too, and all over the world and uh, all over history. Uh, Wood, uh, Herbst, and Bruckner, and people would throw, throw, uh, but they would agree, I think, more or less, with this interpretation of natural language, and don't do it. A lot of people, on the other hand, just try to map this thing onto simple processes. And uh, of course they lose it, and I, uh, they do it. Why? Because the prevailing uh, semi really a myth that people are the only units you can identify as conceptual entities. In fact, they seldom are. Uh, they tend to one thing at once. In fact, they seldom do. And speech, a uh, language, is a linear as speech. Which it seldom if ever is. I didn't get that last point. Language is as linear as speech, which it seldom, if ever, is. Natural language, mm -hmm. I think, if ever. Uh, is, uh, well, maybe sometimes some, some expressions could be, I don't know, I mean, aspects of it could be, but uh, I wouldn't claim to know, <coughs> nor would I claim to, to, to talk about projections of this kind uh, as being realities. I would talk about them as images based upon a certain mythology of reality. And I don't think the AI endeavor along those lines is particularly useful. In particular, AI tends to encourage this sort of projection and get puzzled when <laughs> it doesn't really work or is so curious or so restrictive or whatever. I think that it's necessary if this paradigm be proper that it deals with intelligence rather than artificial intelligence. I think it is a proper paradigm, uh, but it has to be enlarged enormously. My own preference would be to put it in these terms and the process theory accompanying it, which was appropriate to accommodate what was needed, because the operation talked off here are not operations you can carry out really one at once. You can simulate them in a calculus as they did. Some. In doing so, you frequently find, of course, you have mixed solutions, or multiple solutions, and the infinite of the L's of P will come out as, as many. Uh, you would expect them to. I hope they do. <laughs> I mean, I don't take that sort of criticism at all. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a simple statement. Uh, uh, I, I think I, I do criticize, I think, however, the endeavor to um, sort of see language in the image of a particular type of topology and a particular type of formalism, rather than allowing it to have a proper formalization, which is properly rich. It seems like an awfully good place to stop for tonight. Let me know where we started. <laughs>